Hello! My name is Ram and welcome to another video of Matok Lasan and in this video, I'm going to show you how to perform chi-square test for independence using Microsoft Excel. The chi-square test for independence is also known as Pearson's chi-square test or the chi-square test of association. It is used to test the relationship between two categorical variables. It is commonly useful when data can be tabulated in table form in terms of frequencies. This test also uses the chi-square distribution and a contingency table and the test value is found by using the observed and expected values. Before performing the test, we need to make sure that the data are obtained from a random sample and the sample size should be sufficiently large, meaning the expected value in each cell must be 5 or more because we are using a contingency table, right? Let's have this example. Say, a school decided to implement distance learning and 80 students from this school were asked about their preferred distance learning modality and their responses are shown in this table. You can see here that I use coding for each of this modality. For the self-learning modules, I use SLM. For the online-based learning, I use OBL. And for the television radio-based learning, I use TRPL. Here, a male respondent was asked and he said he prefers the self-learning module while the second student, which is a female, prefers online-based learning and so on. And let's say the teacher wants to test the significant relationship between the gender and learning module reference. So for this, we need the chi-square test for independence. For our null hypothesis, we can say that there is no relationship between the gender and learning module preference. Or you can also say the learning module preference is independent of gender. Then our alternative hypothesis is there is a relationship between gender and learning module preference. But you can also write this as the learning module preference is dependent on the gender. So the first thing that we need to do here is to construct a contingency table containing our observed data. So we just need to identify the number of frequencies for each of these categories. And for this, we will use the pivot table function under the insert ribbon. So by selecting the pivot table and by selecting the range of data that we need. And for this, I'm going to select, make sure to select this one and then we will select the gender and the preferred learning module. And do not worry about the labels because if you use this pivot table function, it is assumed that the first row are the labels. You select OK. And we have here a new sheet for our output. And for this one, all we need to do is to look at this window. We will put the gender here in the row box while the preferred learning module will be sent here in the column box now you can see here that we were able to generate a contingency table but we don't have values yet right so for you to have values you may drag one of this so you can drag gender or preferred learning module on what box here so it should be count off because we need frequencies for this table. And notice that when I drag the gender variable here on this box, these frequencies appeared on our table. But in case count is not appearing here, you can always select the value field settings like average box, mean product, count numbers, and so on. But for now, we need the frequency, so count is good. Now we have the contingency table for our data. And what I'm going to do now is to copy paste this table. So copy and then select our working sheet and paste this using this one so that we could edit the values in each cell. As I mentioned a while ago, in a chi-square test, we are comparing the observed values and the expected values. So this part or this table is for the observed data, observed or actual data. Now, 
we will just um, fix this table and let's have here some colors yeah you can always add some colors here if you prefer it and now the next thing that we need to do is to identify our expected table and to do that we need another copy of this table so copy then paste it here and we will change this to expected table or the title for this table will be the expected frequency table and we need to change the values here and for this we need to identify the appropriate row sum and column sum for each of this cell so for this cell we type equal sign and identify the row sum the row sum for this is 37 so this is 37 i'm going to select this one and we need to multiply it to the column sum and the column sum for this cell is 30 okay and then divide this product by the grand total. Well, I placed the grand total here in this column, but the grand total here for this table is 80 because our sample size is 80. So I'm going to select 80 here. Now, we have the first value or the first expected value for this cell, which is 13.875. But guys, notice that for this one, we need to use this row sum again, which is 37, and this grand total, which is 80 on the denominator. So for us to copy-paste the formula, we can go back here in this cell and use the absolute reference. Okay, so for the absolute reference, okay, let me just show you the formula. I'm going to put dollar sign here or the absolute reference so that if we will copy this formula on the right side, the column sum will not change or rather the row column will not change the row sum okay so here for the grand total i'm going to place the reference value again all right so when i copy paste that or if i will copy paste the formula here i will have the same values look at this one so here it automatically uh, multiplied 39 and 37 then divide it by 80 all right so for this cell the row sum will change because this um yeah this cell corresponds to this row sum so this is 43 times this column sum again which is 30 then divided by the grand total as we all know, the grand total will not change, so let's use the absolute reference here. And this time, I'm going to put an absolute reference again on this first value. Since the grand total is also not changing, I'm going to place another absolute reference here. So that we'll have 16.125 and dragging this formula or this cell will copy-paste the formula then let's see yes for this one it multiplied 11 and 43 which is the row sum and column sum for this cell divided by 80. now after completing the observed table and the expected table we need to compute for the p-value degrees of freedom chi-square value and the critical value for the p-value all we need to do is use this formula equal sign chi and then you look for chi sq test and here it is chi sq test then we need to select our actual range which in this case is this or these cells remember that we don't need to include the grand total only this actual values comma then select this expected values so that's the reason why we showed here the observed and expected table because in this formula, we will going to need the actual range and the expected range. So pressing enter after the close parenthesis will give us the p-value of 0 0.1376 and so on. But of course, 
we need to round it off to three decimal places for easy understanding. Now, if you're in a hurry and you really want to know right away if you need to reject or not reject the null hypothesis, you can use this p-value to decide. As we all know, if the p-value is less than the alpha level, we need to reject the null hypothesis. And if the p-value is greater than alpha level, then do not reject the null hypothesis. In this case, the alpha level, well, it's not mentioned, but let's say our alpha level is 5% or 0.05 or the significance level, all right? So, significance level is 0 0.05. 0 0.138 is greater than 0 0.05. And since it's greater than the alpha level, then do not reject the null hypothesis. That's our decision. But if you want to show the critical value method, we need to identify the degrees of freedom, the chi-square value, and the critical value for this. And to do that, the degrees of freedom is just rows minus 1 times columns minus 1. This is for the chi-square distribution. So we have equal, open parenthesis, then we have rows, which in this case, we have how many rows? We have 1, 2 rows. So it's 2 minus 1. Then we need to multiply it to columns minus 1. The number of columns that we have is 1, 2, 3. So we have 3 columns minus 1. So the degrees of freedom for this one is 2. And for the critical value, all we need to do, or rather the chi-square value, you just need equal sign and then type chi and select chi sq dot inv dot rt okay that's it and for this you need to select the p value this one comma the degrees of freedom our degrees of freedom is two so select two here close parenthesis enter and we now have the chi square value for our test Using this will save us some time because if you really want to use the traditional method, you need to use this formula for the chi-square test wherein you need to get the, sum the summation of the difference of the observed minus expected squared over expected. That's a lot, right? But if you will use this function, you can get the chi-square value right away. But for the critical value, we're going to need a chi-square distribution table. But don't worry, the table is always available in the internet or any other statistical books. And for this, I am using the distribution table in the elementary statistics of Blumann. Now, the degrees of freedom of in our given is 2. So, this is 2. And the alpha level is 0 0.05. So, if this is 2 and the alpha level is 0 0.05, then the critical value for our test is 5.991 because it corresponds the degrees of freedom on two of two and our column for the significance level which is five percent or 0 0.05 so the critical value is 5.991 here and we can now compare the chi-square value and the critical value note here that the chi-square value is less than the critical value which is 5.991 so with that, we can say, or it is inferred, that we need to retain the null hypothesis. Do not reject the null hypothesis. So if you notice, we have the same decision as our, the decision in the p-value method. Because here in the p-value method, it's greater than 0 0.05, so do not reject the null hypothesis. Here... The chi-square value is less than the critical value, so the decision is also not to reject, right? So here in our null hypothesis, since the null hypothesis was retained, then there is no relationship between gender and learning module preference. By reporting it properly, we can see here that a chi-square test of independence was performed to examine the relationship between gender and learning module preference. Now, since the chi-square value of 3.966 is less than the critical chi-square value, 
then the relation between these variables was not significant at 0.05. Meaning, the module learning preference of the respondents is independent of the gender. And we don't have enough evidence to say that there is a significant relationship between the gender and learning module preference. That's all for this video. If you want more video discussions in Microsoft Excel, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for your updates. You can always check my playlist in the description down below for other references. See you in the next video.